Welcome to The Lead on this Good Friday. I'm Jake Tapper. If you thought the Mueller report was the end, it really just might be the beginning. House Democrats have issued a subpoena today to obtain the full report, all the underlying evidence and zero redactions. The Democrats are now faced with the question of what to do next. After Robert Mueller made it clear he found no direct evidence of any member of the Trump team conspiring with Russia to criminally interfere with the 2016 election, while also describing numerous incidents of potential obstruction of justice by the president and simultaneously painting a devastating picture of a White House and a presidency beset by chaos and prevarication. A president saved perhaps only by the DOJ guidelines to not indict a sitting president and the president's own staff's refusal to carry out his direct orders sometimes. As one senior administration official put it to me this afternoon, reacting to the report, quote, that the president makes absurd demands of his staff and administration officials who are alarmed by them and reluctant to follow them is not only unsurprising, but has become the norm. Today, an angry President Trump called the statements made about him in the, quote, crazy Mueller report fabricated and totally untrue and, quote, total BS, although he didn't say BS. It's a report that we should note was in part based on interviews with true Trump insiders such as Don McGahn and Stephen Miller, Hope Hicks, Corey Lewandowski, Steve Bannon, Reince Priebus, and on and on. Those insiders telling the special counsel under oath, a special counsel who sends people to jail for lying to him, about all the times President Trump lied to the American people, to you. Reports President Trump tried to brand as fake news, reports that were 100% accurate all along. So while the president has been cleared of conspiracy with Russia, his White House has been exposed for other misdeeds. CNN's Caitlin Collins kicks off our coverage now from the White House. It was a complete and total exoneration. From total exoneration to total BS. President Trump changing his tune on the special counsel's report one day after its release, tweeting that statements made about me by certain people in the crazy Mueller report, in itself written by 18 angry Democrat Trump haters, which are fabricated and totally untrue. The president adding a warning to watch out for people that take so-called notes when the notes never existed until needed. Because I never agreed to testify, it was not necessary for me to respond to statements made in the report about me, some of which are total BS. The president didn't use that shorthand and didn't finish that thought, but at the eye of his tweet storm is former White House counsel Don McGahn, who according to the Mueller report took detailed notes of his conversations with Trump, including one where he asked, why do you take notes? Lawyers don't take notes. McGahn responded that it was because he's a real lawyer with a legal responsibility to keep an accurate record. Trump responded, I've had a lot of great lawyers, like Roy Cohn. He did not take notes. The report details a troubled relationship between McGahn and Trump, but reveals the former White House lawyer was a major player in stopping the president from influencing the investigation potentially protecting him from an obstruction charge. The report reveals a president who lied often to the public and his own staff. What you're seeing and what you're reading is not what's happening. Including claiming he never tried to fire Mueller, which the report says he did. Why did you fire Robert Mueller? Why did you want to fire Robert Mueller? Fake news, folks, fake news. What's your message? Typical New York Times fake stories. He claimed he wasn't pursuing business in Russia, but the report says he was. I promise you I never made, I don't have any deals with Russia. He insisted he knew nothing about WikiLeaks, though the report says he directed campaign associates to find Hillary Clinton's deleted emails. Uh, I know nothing about WikiLeaks. But the dishonesty from the White House didn't stop there. Press Secretary Sarah Sanders now under fire after admitting to investigators that she wasn't basing this claim on anything. So what's your response to these rank and file FBI agents who, who disagree with your contention that they lost faith in, in Director Cohen? Look, we've heard from uh, countless members of the FBI that say very different things. Today, Sanders defended making false statements to reporters. I'm sorry that I wasn't a robot like the Democrat Party that went out for two and a half years and stated time and time again that there was definitely Russian collusion between the president and his campaign. 
So today, Jake, she characterized it as a slip of the tongue, even though it was a remark that Sarah Sanders made multiple times over the course of those several days. In another interview, she was asked if the president had ever asked her to lie. She said he had not and that he'd also never instructed her, Jake, to break the law. All right, Caitlin Collins, thanks so much. Uh, let's chew into this with my experts. Um, let's start with Sarah Sanders uh, admitting to the special counsel uh, that something she said, she had claimed uh, that uh, FBI agents uh, were contacting the White House and, and telling them how happy they were about Comey being fired. She, she told the special counsel under oath that that wasn't, quote, founded on anything. Uh, Scott Jennings, uh, she's been trying to spin that since the release of the report. You heard some of that. Uh, at least she wasn't talking like a robot like Democrats, she said. Uh, wouldn't the, the decent thing to be just to admit that she shouldn't lie to the American people and apologize for it and then, and then move forward? Yeah, look, the, I don't condone lying. I don't condone asking other people to lie. In this particular case, just a little bit more precision would have made it true. I mean, I've read op-eds from former senior FBI officials and FBI agents uh, showing their displeasure with Jim Comey. So there was actually a way to, to make a true statement there. But the reality is, is that there is some lying in this report. Uh, there is some reports of telling other people to lie, and we shouldn't condone it. We shouldn't condone it on any side. I don't condone this any more than I condone a political party going out and telling the American people for a whole year, say, that their taxes were going up when instead they were going down. So I don't think we should put up with lying. I just think the tab ought to be evenly dispersed across the political spectrum. I just want to be clear, Jake, as a communications professional, this should this should be career ending for Sarah Huckabee Sanders. She should never set put on, foot on that podium again as a comms person. And Amanda, you know, all you have is your word and what you say. And the fact that on more than one occasion, this is just the occasion we're highlighting today, but there are more than one occasions Sarah Huckabee Sanders did not tell the truth from the, the podium, um, namely when she said that uh, President Trump knew nothing about the payments to Stormy Daniels when, in fact, he authorized and signed even one of the checks. Um, she should not be able to continue in this capacity. It is really just um, a, a middle finger, if you will, for lack of a better term, to the, the respect that should come from that podium and to all the folks that have come before her. I think their you lies you, have you, cost ahead, the man. taxpayers. Go. These lies have cost the taxpayers $25 million. The truth is there was attempted collusion. There was attempted obstruction. And because they lied and lied and lied at every turn, we had to go have this 22 months long investigation. This report can be summed up in two volumes. It's not obstruction and collusion. It's dumb and arrogant. The whole first volume is filled with dumb mistakes that this campaign made. They took all kinds of meetings and then they lied about it in stupid and dumb ways. And then the second part is about covering up for those lies because Donald Trump didn't want anybody to know that these meetings happened. And why I think this stuff with Mike Flynn has really been undercovered. I really want to know what Robbie Mook has to say about this because Donald Trump tasked National Security Advisor Flynn with going out and trying to find these emails on the dark web. And then they talked to some Senate Judiciary staffer to say, hey, maybe we could get the Russians or the Chinese or maybe the Iranians to reassemble these. This is bonker stuff. No wonder Trump wanted to cover it up. Well, and I also think... Well, Robbie Mook, yeah, go, let, let us know what you... What, get, more broadly, <laughs> Robbie, get, you, were Hillary Clinton, you, were more Hillary Clinton, you were Hillary Clinton's campaign manager. What's your reaction to the Mueller report and what you read in it? Well, I, the, the, the first thing that stands out to me in all this is Mueller was instructed at the very beginning that he couldn't indict anyone. So... I, it, it always fascinates me that, you know, we did have to go through a $25 million process, but he was never allowed to I I indict the center of the investigation, first off. Second, what's, what's been remarkable to me in all of this is what's not illegal, okay? So, you know, as, as we were just discussing, uh, the, the, the report says that there were no crimes, uh, supposedly, as it relates to Russia, but to me it's remarkable that the president of the United States or a candidate running for president of the United States as a major party nominee can call someone up and say, hey, these emails that were stolen by a foreign adversary's intelligence service and given to a rogue actor who has probably, in, through the leaks of, uh, from our intelligence community, literally gotten people killed around the world, people in service of our country, probably died as the result of what WikiLeaks has done, that, you, that you're allowed to dispatch someone to contact that organization about emails stolen from the opposing candidate, and that's not a crime. 
Hmm. I mean, I think that's what we need to be spending more time talking about. I'm convinced at this point, we're never gonna get to the bottom of what happened in 2016. The president's gonna stonewall, they're gonna create all these false equivalences to say, well, he does that and the other side does it, both sides are bad. Both sides are not bad, but it's insane to me that you can do these things and not commit a crime. And I think that has to change.